morning. Whew, it's toasty. Um, dressed for outside weather, but we're inside still. And we're in our Airbnb in Athens, Greece, in the part called uh, Perus. I know it's P E R E A U S. And so we're close to the water. And it's almost Christmas, and definitely people here are shopping and doing their Christmas thing. Definitely one thing that I thought was surprising is churches were open like 7, 8 in the morning and people were just doing their little crosses and and busy, busy, busy music coming out of the churches. <laughs> These big, um, big churches. One of them we went past yesterday and uh, had a giant statue in front and it was... Uh, the leader of the last Byzantine Empire or something like that. I hadn't really gotten into it. I think yesterday we were just kind of wandering around because we ate breakfast really early because we got up ridiculous like four o'clock in the morning, walked over, went to breakfast in this really super nice place that you wouldn't even believe what they give you. Oh my gosh, let me see what the name of this place is. Oh, fuck Pharaohs. That place was great. For breakfast, for seven euros, you get toast, a ham sandwich, an omelet, yogurt, coffee, orange juice, a glass of water, cereal. What else was it, babe? Anything else? Just felt like it was a lot of food and a piece of cake to see with you. So it was like a lot of food for seven bucks. And that's the name of that place. That place was nice. But then we were so close to the port. We just, you know, we were like, oh, we want to go to Acropolis. So get on the bus. That was interesting experience because none of the stuff is really, really written in English. And I don't know, I, I was looking at my little cell phone, how you can um, change the map from driving and walking to transportation. And I couldn't tell the buses from the trains. And so we got on a train, got like a all day pass or five day pass, got on a train. Then I was like, wait a minute, we're going towards where we're supposed to go. And then all of a sudden it turned. I didn't know where to get off. Then we got on another train. And then, what is it? We got on a bus, and then we got on a bus, and then I guess they went on a strike, and they kicked everybody off the bus. And so I saw people pulling out their phone and doing the little apps and stuff, and people were like, what? What's going on? What? What? But of course, they were saying it in Greek, not in English. But um, <laughs> I almost choked. But it was just like, Wow. And I didn't want to download that stupid app. I don't know why. The app here for transportation is free now. And it is a pretty good app. And you know what? You you need that app because when you're having cabs, cab rides, the person can tell you any price. And somebody did do this when we finally did get to Acropolis and we were ready to go home. They said 35 euros for a ride home and I looked I said wait a minute the app said $14 like no thanks and he was like $14 but dude come on you know it didn't cost 30 euros that that's like almost the price to get to the airport and anytime you go to the airport in most cities anyway it's like 40 50 dollars off the rip so anyhow we waited we're in this industrial part of town. I mean, dust particles are flying and hitting me in the face. And I'm just like, ah, there's no more buses because I didn't really understand it. it was on strike. I thought maybe something was wrong with his particular bus. So then we finally got the app and we went to the Acropolis. We're downstairs or down level. Man, and if you see this place, I mean, it's kind of like going to Universal Studios. This place is like big and then it's up, up, up. and Oh no. So anyway, we found a really cool shop. My son got a really nice chess board with some chess pieces. 
stuff and we didn't even go inside because at that point so many things that were weird were happening and I just felt like uh, you know our phones are dead now we didn't really plan this we just kind of went off the seat of our pants leaving the restaurant and just figured since we were up we would just go on this adventure but the adventure for me said let's try it again another day so the one thing that I really did want to see was Socrates, things with Socrates. I really wasn't really concerned with too many Greek gods and stuff like that. It really wasn't a big thing for me. But recently I asked about the name of my guides because some of us, we have guides. And I was reading that book, Ask Your Guides. And it says a lot of them don't have names or they don't have names that you can even verbalize. Like you can't put them into human words. But it did say if you want to name your guys, you can just give them a name or sit with yourself and see what name comes to you. So the name that came to me was Socrates. I was like, what? I don't know anything about Socrates and Plato and stuff like that. I don't, I, I've never studied that. I've never, I don't think I've ever, you know, yeah, it's just not into it. Let's just say that. Not ever caring about it. But then as I began to, look up things about Socrates, his philosophy, I thought, oh my gosh, this is totally how I feel because I resonate with that, that we really don't know anything like orange. is because someone has taught you that it's orange. But what if the name that we call it orange is really blue? Like this is a long time thing of mine. What if you learn that the floor is the ceiling and the ceiling is the floor? What if you break the foundations of everything that you've already been programmed to think and let it all go and allow things to just flow in a way that resonates with you rather than using these rigidly defined lines that have been assigned to us. Because I think if we thought more like this, then we wouldn't argue so much with people. I think the only reason that people argue with stuff is because I know what I'm talking about and you don't. And we want to force our opinions on other people. And it causes what, you know, causes a lot of strife. So, but what if you realize that you don't know anything? Um, there's even some books beyond and my friend Peter approached me with this because um some folks did come forward and say hey there's some flaws in the law I'm not here to say that that's not my place but I did also think this is a channeling of someone else's channeling and it seems like uh most things or many things in our metaphysical community and environment uh, is based on these teachings of the law of one. So if everything that you fundamentally believe is based on the law of one, and there happens to be a flaw or some flaws in the law of one, what you have is a house of cards, cards built on each other. And it makes the house of cards very insecure, unsafe, unstable, right? There's people who base their life, lifestyle choices and decisions on other people, other teachers, metaphysical teachers, and so-and-so said this, and so-and-so said that, and so-and-so said this, and they read someone's book, and then they go around basically professing the philosophy of whoever wrote the book. And then they get to say, well, this person's compromised and this person's a Satanist and this person is, uh, oh, there was a very specific one. Oh, yeah. So, so, oh, their, um, their readings are fake or they're, you know, whatever. They'll go in and, you know, people that go in and they pretty much say that everybody's stuff is fake. But I said, wow. So if, if my channelings are fake, then your channelings are fake. And if my readings are fake, then why aren't your readings fake? And it becomes this house of cards where I pretty much 
I don't really examine too much of what other people and their philosophies are. I don't try to rigidly learn the main part of who I am because I basically am just with my own thoughts and feelings about things. And it's really cool when you can meet people and you're like, did you think about that? Did I think about that? Yeah, I thought about that. Did you think about that? And then you're like, hey, we were thinking the same things. And it's nice when those things happen and those things resonate. But I generally just don't read people's books and like build up rigid uh, values on them. Though I did read Ask Your Dots. And I did come up with the name Socrates. And by chance, I was already going to Greece. So the most important thing to me today is really just to go see Socrates' prison. And as I was thinking about it, I thought about just how much my mind is being triggered with synapse, with neurological. It's just being triggered. Like I'm having lots of thoughts, lots of more profound thoughts because I feel like I'm a profound thinker, but I'm having more thoughts and stimulating questions. And I just imagine that as I accidentally go sit down on this rock and behind me look up at the sign and it says Socrates prison, that he met me there and just said, good job. And then slid into me, you know, just welcomed me and as I was thinking of it like the inside lining of my nose began to burn and my eyes began to burn as if I was about to cry like so your body there is another book too talking about your body um keeps score and it keeps score but it also, it tells you things. It, t- it gives you signs. Like some people say chills of truth. When people are saying something that's true, you get all these chills. Or when somebody says something that resonates and you get chills. Or when you're questioning yourself and sitting with yourself and you're basically kind of like doing the muscle test. And you ask yourself this question or you pose this idea or question and it shows physical signs in your body that, ha, huh, this resonates. So anyway, as I thought that today, it resonated that, okay, hey, I'm going back there. I don't know if I'm going to make it up to the Acropolis, but I'm definitely going to go to see the prison of Socrates and all those things, mostly things that are Socrates. But today I'm going to use the deck of power to give you guys a quick shout out because we did miss our Tuesday meeting. That was the day of my flight and that was just really amazing. So I'll pick three cards. Sometimes I think it's good to have a one message of the day, but I'll pick three cards. The numbers, if you got feelings about numbers or really focus on numbers, the numbers are 16, 20, and 11. The theme of each card Number 16 is dream, which reminds me, I woke up out of my dream saying, this woman isn't doing anybody any favors by not telling them the truth. She's not telling people what she really thinks and what she really feels. And I was like going to write about it. And then some other stuff happened. It took me away from that, but it resonated because I, you know, I'm having an issue and I'm like, wait a minute, I got to tell the truth. Say it now, speak it because people think that you're okay with certain things that they do or certain situations, but, you know, we kind of pat each other on the back and we don't ever really tell each other the truth. We kind of like tiptoe around it. And then people can go outside with a booger on their, on their lip, you know, with broccoli between their teeth, but nobody's saying, Hey, I got to share this with you. You know, they go unchecked. All right. And that was my dream for today. Anyway, that's so funny. That that was yeah, my dream for today. And then the next card is harmony. So twenty is harmony and truth. Now, for me to have dream, harmony, and truth, that sounds like a very pleasant situation, right? Living your dreams, being in harmony with 
your true self. So harmony and truth, right? So number 16, one day you will remember the great dream and the way will become known to you. You entered into life through the veil of the dream because your reason for being here must be kept secret from you until you find your way home. You don't know who you are now, but one fine day you will remember. It is like a creation looking for itself. You are in oneness with all life. Through you are aware of it. Rest assured, you will awaken from the dream. Until then, let the great mother rest within your spirit. She is the universe. She is the womb of all life. She is the light that shines from your eyes, illuminating your daily dreams. The possibilities you dream will become your reality. So you cannot be afraid to dream. It's important. Because it's the way that you help connect to who you truly are. And that's dream as in goals and, 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 you know, it's okay to want things. It's okay to desire things and it's okay to want to change and be better. Harmony. Harmony lives in a lodge of balance and the equilibrium between the physical and spiritual aspects of your life. For there to be harmony, there must be balance. Imagine yourself in the hub of a sacred wheel standing in the center. This wheel must function every day of your life. If you imagine that the South is your physical self and the West is your emotional self and the North is your spiritual self and the East is your mental self, you see that in an ancient wheel of truth, remember, consider whether you spend as much time in the physical in the South as you do in the spiritual in the north. Are they balanced? Are they in harmony? Reflect whether you spend time in your emotions rather than in your mind. Adjust daily by being aware of your actual behavior patterns to incorporate equal effort in all directions so that your wheel of function is perfect harmony. And that is something too that I was writing about the other day because people are making spirituality into the job and all they do is listen to videos and all they do is read books and all they do is meditate and it's like okay but when do you just laugh when do you hug and enjoy people when do you just enjoy being physically present where you are because Always reading and always, you know, studying is not necessarily being present. You might have the presence of mind to be aware of what you're reading, but it doesn't mean that you're necessarily present. It's you, you know, connecting with an idea outside of yourself or connecting in meditation into the spirit world or just making connections that aren't saying, <sighs> take a deep breath and just be here. What if I just appreciate the colors around me or the people around me? Or what if I just laugh and tell a joke or, you know, what if I give myself a hug and massage or a pleasant bath where I am present in this physical and actually enjoy and be grateful? I'm so grateful that this sunlight is shining on me today. I'm so grateful that the water that it's raining and my flowers are being watered and I'm grateful for life. The ability to feel all the different range of emotions because, you know, we can't just be one. What kind of life is it if you only experience anger, only experience sadness, and you only experience joy? When you taste pain, you actually begin to appreciate feeling normal. 
a regular day. When you experience pain, it, it allows you to, to appreciate the highs. But what about just the day to day? Ah, it's just a regular day. And how about I appreciate that because I don't have a headache and my back doesn't hurt and my foot isn't throbbing and I don't have a pain in my side. I just feel good. So feeling good to me has become feeling no pain, no worry, no doubt. Feeling regular, normal is feeling good. And you can actually become so grateful for just feeling normal. You don't have to have nipples stimulated and you don't have to have like tingling in your forehead. That is not necessarily the feeling of good. You don't have to have these extreme highs to be grateful and to feel good. Anyway, truth, because we're getting out of here. Are you living your sacred truth? Your being is like a spiritual lodge with this sacred place is the realization that the divine light of your creation live, divine light of your creation, live in your spiritual lodge, surrounded by peace and joy. Outside the lodge is great wilderness where the rest of the world lives, but the wilderness can be, become a battlefield stained by blood and ignorance and earthly pain. To have lasting power in the world, you must earn the trust of those around you. Most people live without trust and a sacred place within. Within a spirit lodge, as such, they don't know how to enter the spiritual lodge with others. Live within your sacred truth that you may know peace and joy in the great wilderness and beyond. Come inside yourself and find your peace and your gratitude. Then you take, you know what? Before this even started, I was going to say, you take you with you everywhere you go. And that is basically the, the truth. Be in a spiritual, peaceful place when you are just you all by yourself. Now, gradually you find this outside that, guess what? I don't need to be sourced from outside myself to have peace, joy, and happiness because I'm living in my truth. Now I can live my truth with others, but I first have to find it within myself. I can't wait for Susie to stop crying and for Jim to stop stepping on toes and for everything around me to be perfect to find my perfect place of peace. My perfect place of peace is within me. And then when I find my perfect place, place of peace, I can take that with me wherever I go. So no matter what is going on around me. So I'd love to hear feedback on that. I'd love to hear what you get out of that about, you know, the dream, about finding harmony and balance, about truth. And I'll put that one up there so you can see it if you want to cross the screen. But to me, this all connects your dreams, harmony and truth, living your truth and pink dream, living your truth, living your dreams in harmony. So let me know what you think about that and have fun.